So a rational expression is just the quotient of two polynomials. So for example, you could have a monomial over a monomial, a binomial over a binomial, or even a trinomial over a binomial. Right? All three different kinds of examples. Our goal is to try to get it in its simplest forms. And there's three steps. Step one, we will factor. All right, so if you remember factoring, a trinomial always factors into what? Two binomials, where the leading term is always what? X, and then you have to figure out what multiplies to your C and adds to your B. So in this situation, what multiplies to 12 and adds to negative 7? Negative 4, negative 3. The one on bottom, what's special about that guy? What kind of binomial? It is a square. It's called a difference of squares. So note, a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b. So what you'll do is you take the square root of each. So the square root of x squared is x. I'll write it down twice. Square root of 9 is 3. I'll write it down twice. 1 with a plus, 1 with a minus. And then it's factored. It does not matter if it's minus plus, plus minus. It does not matter. That's the first step. Step two, you will then cancel. So what can I cancel here? I can cancel out the x minus 3s. And your last step is to just write what's left. So here I get x minus 4 over x plus 3. Got your answer. So factor, cancel, write what's left. That is it. It is simple, but it is a process. Mm -hmm. So the square root of 9. Yeah, so the difference of squares tell us it puts the minus and positive for us, so we don't have to worry about all that. Questions? All right. So please note, a rational expression and, and any simplified form must have the same domain in order to be equivalent. What that means is the way you can check your answer. You can plug in the original equation into graph. You can plug your answer into graph, and if you get the exact same graph, you did it correctly. Because right? you're not changing the value of the expression, you're just simplifying it. So it should, in fact, just be the exact same function. Alright, All right, let's do one more. Well, I'll say one more. Let's do a lot more. Alright. What's step one? Factor. A trinomial factors into what? Two binomials with a leading term of what? X. So what multiplies to negative 6 but adds up to negative 1? That's the multiply to negative 6. That does multiply negative 6, but does that add up to negative 1? No. Still doesn't add up to negative 1. Well, which one is it? Good. So since you want to add up to a negative 1, it should be a minus 3 and a positive 2. That part is like the hardest part of this entire assignment. It's just trying to figure out the two numbers that will multiply to one number and add to the other. And it's just a logic puzzle that you're going to have to work through. So again, a trinomial factors into what? Two binomials with a leading term of what? So again, what multiplies negative 2 but adds to 1? Good. Negative 1 and positive 2 so that it adds to 1 but multiplies to negative 2. Right. Now, once I factored, what's the next step? What can I cancel? And cancel out the x plus 2. And then the final step is to what? Rewrite what's left. And what's left? Perfect. Questions? Yeah.
And if you think this is too much, we haven't even gotten to the too much part. <laughs> okay. All right, let's start off with the simple one that a lot of uh, kids do miss. And so let's talk about monomial. And the reason they miss this one is because they're wrapped up in the complicated ones that they kind of forget how to do the easy ones. All right, so when you have a monomial divided by a monomial, you're simply just going to divide. What's 28 divided by negative 7? Negative 4. And then separate your letters. If I have like bases, what do I do with their exponents? I add them. I subtract. So if I have like bases and I'm dividing, I'm going to subtract. So what's 3 minus 2? 1. So I just have an x. What about the y's? It would be. Perfect. And so what you need to remember is you take the difference of them. So 3 and 2 is still 1. But since the 3 is bigger on bottom, the result will go on bottom. That's it. Good memory. All right. Now let's go back to what we were doing. I'll tell you what, you do it. You try B. Again, the goal is to figure out what multiplies to C and adds to B. It'll stay like that. I'm not going to put a number in front of the letter squared quite yet. Correct. You ready? So a trinomial factors into what? Good. The leading term of x. All right. So on the top one, what? Multiply to negative 8, but add it to 2. Good. Negative 2 and positive 4. What? Multiply to 6 and add it to negative 5. Perfect. All right, then what do I do? So therefore, what's my answer? Remember, you always want to work it backwards. Try to figure out what, like, check it. So negative 1 and positive 6, that adds up to negative 5, but doesn't multiply to a positive 6. So there's only two numbers that will work for both situations. Correct. All right. In a situation like this, if the hex is in the wrong spot, right, the hex is on the right side rather than on the left side, what you can do is factor out a negative, all right? And what it'll do, it will switch it, all right? But not only a negative, but what does 12 and 4 actually have in common? Because sometimes greatest common factor is all you need. They have a 4. All right. So what I do is I take out a negative 4, and the way you do this, you're then going to factor backwards. What's negative 4x divided by negative 4? x. 
And what's 12 divided by negative 4? Negative 3. Now, by doing that, you've put the x in the right spot. All right? You always want the x to be on the left side. Okay? So you only have to do this if x is in the wrong spot. And then also, sometimes, just a greatest common factor is all they have in common. We good on that one? All right. What's special about the bottom? It's a difference of squares, right? And a difference of squares will factor into what? Two binomials. Well, not always. You just want to take the square root of x squared, which ends up being what? x. And the square root of 9, which ends up being what? Good, a positive and a minus 3. And again, that order does not matter. What's the next step? What can I cancel? So therefore, I get negative 4 over x plus 3. Real quick, I want to jump back to B. The next big mistake students try to do is they try to cancel out the x's right there. You cannot. All right? If it's a binomial, the entire binomial has to be the same to be able to cancel. All right? So try not to get cancel happy because that's what students tend to do. All right. So let's talk about multiplying. How do we multiply? Okay, okay, good, good, good. How do you multiply a fraction in general? No. That's if there's an equal sign. Just across. If you're multiplying fractions, you literally just multiply straight across. All right? The butterfly comes in effect when you have the equal sign. All right, so then, yeah, so that gives you 21. Can I multiply two different letters? No, so I'm going to write them out as is. So x squared and y. What's 5 times 12? Then I get x cubed and y. Now that you have a monomial over a monomial, looks like what we had on A. Now I can simplify it. What's 21 divided by 60? All right, so we get 7 over 20. What's x squared divided by x cubed? X on the bottom. Again, the difference between 3 and 2 is 1. But since the 3 is bigger on bottom, the x will go on bottom. All right, what about y divided by y? They'll just cancel each other out, leaving you with 7 over 20 x. Questions? All right, here comes the part where there's a lot of work. When you have a situation like this where you're multiplying, the process doesn't change. It is still factor, cancel, right what's left. The only thing that does change is this is really just a gigantic fraction. Because right? multiplying, you multiply straight across, right? Everything on top would still be on top. So this is just one gigantic fraction that I can factor. All right, so let's kind of do it together. What is 3x minus 6? What process would I try to factor that with? GCF. What is the greatest common factor? 3. If I factor out of 3, what's left? 2. Good. All right. Just working across. doesn't matter which direction you go. What's a trinomial factor into? 2 binomials. With the leading term of? X. And then the process again. What multiplies to 6 adds to 5. Good. Positive 2 and positive 3. All right. What's special about the guy on bottom? Difference of squares, and that factors into? All right. With the lead, uh, well, what's the square root of x squared? x. Square root of 4. And again, 1 with the plus, 1 with the minus. All right. Trinomial factors into what? Two binomials, the leading term of, so therefore what multiplies to negative 3 but adds to 2. Good. You get negative 1, positive 3. That multiplies to negative 3 and adds to 2. All right. So there you go. A lot of factoring now, but still the same process. It's more of it. All right. What's the step two? 
Cancel. So what can I cancel here? Oh, I wrote plus two twice, didn't I? Okay, so I can cancel out my x minus twos. What else? X plus threes. What else? X plus two. Anything else? No. So what's left on top? Three. What's left on bottom? Yes. Oh, you can if you want, but since I'm not multiplying by anything else to it, I didn't. But if I would have had like two binomials left on bottom, I would have definitely put it in parentheses to indicate multiplication. Uh, but since there's nothing left other than that, you don't have to. Yes. Of course. Any other questions there? All right, one more process I want to teach you, and then I will let you practice some. Let's talk about division. How do you divide fractions in general? What's that mean? Okay, that's just a regular fraction. Well, when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, what do you do? No, that's multiplication. Nope. I'll give you a hint. They make really good chicken. <laughs> they do really make good chicken. But uh, a different chicken place. And that's, again, another good one. KFC. So, heat, change, flip. I know it's KCF, but same concept, same letters. You want to keep the first fraction as is. Change division to multiplication. Then flip the second fraction. So somewhere in second grade, somewhere in second grade, you're supposed to learn this. <laughs> All right, now you've changed it into a multiplication problem. How do you solve multiplication problems? Straight across. So seven times eight, 56, very good. All right, can't multiply two different letters, so X and Y. What happened? My bad, I heard 56. No. All right, then what's 4 times 12? I know, that's what I said, 4 times 21. Close enough. 84. All right, can't do anything with the letters, so X cubed and Y cubed. All right, so now we're ready to simplify it. 56 divided by 84? It's a four. Two over three. Very good. All right. X divided by X cubed. Where? On the bottom. Y divided by Y cubed. Where Y squared on the bottom. So you still take the difference. So the difference between three and one is two. But since the three is bigger on bottom, that's where my result will go is on bottom. Then the result will go on top. The result, you still take the difference, but you always put the result where the bigger uh, number is. Any right, questions on that? I'll do another one with you, then you'll practice. We're not going to do example four, because I'll never give you a word problem that complicated. Um, but five is what you're going to practice. All right, so I one like this. What do I have to do first? Keep change flip before you start factoring. So again, keep it, change it, flip it. So I'll keep it. Change the multiplication. Flip the second. All right. Questions on that first step. All right, now I'm ready to factor. A trinomial factors into what? Two binomials, where the leading term is. All right, and then so what multiplies the four and adds the five? Seven. 
Nope. What is it? One and four, no negative. So positive one and positive four will multiply to positive four and add to positive five. All right, what about the second one here? What's special about that one? What am I going to do? Got to find GCF in the situation. What's the GCF? And X. Good, X minus 3. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Come back over here. Trinomial factors into two binomials with the leading term of. So it multiplies to negative 12 but adds to 1. It would be 3 and 4. Most of their signs. Good. Negative 3 and positive 4, because that will add up to positive 1, but multiply to a negative 12. What's special about that one? Difference of squares. Good. And the difference of squares breaks down into two binomials. And then the square root of x squared is? Square root of 1 is? 1 with the minus, 1 with the positive. Right? Again, doesn't matter the order. All right, now that I factored everything, what's my next step? All right, so what can I cancel? X minus 3. X plus 4. And then X plus 1. Good. 2X over X minus 1. Again, a mistake students will try to do is cancel out those X's. You cannot do that. All right, that is a binomial. All right, questions? All right, so we're not doing this one. Let's practice this. Multiplying and dividing. So that was this up to the part A is just like this one. So you want to factor and cancel, and that was that. Yeah, it's non factor. Mm -hmm.
doesn't look like it. You just write it right next to it. So this is in the situation where you would want to keep the parentheses to indicate multiplication. So in that situation, that's where you're going to want to factor in a negative so that you can switch the two and then do difference of squares. Mm -hmm. You just have a negative on the outside of one of them. This is a different way to do division. You ready? All right, let's look at it. So, step one, factor. So what's the top factor into? X minus two and X plus five, because that multiplies to negative 10 and adds to three. What's the bottom? So X, what? Good, that multiplies negative 12 and adds up to 6. What about over here? And what about this one? Just x plus 3. I couldn't do anything with it. So what's my next step? So what can I cancel? The x minus 2s. The x plus 6. Leaving you with what? Good. Blank sheet book parentheses to indicate the multiplication. Over. X plus three. Everyone good there then? Let's look at the next one. So what's step one before I can start factoring? KFC. All right, I'm going to keep it, change it, flip it. So X squared minus 7X plus 10 over X squared minus 8X plus 15. Change multiplication. Flip the second fraction. Nope. You end up canceling things that shouldn't have been canceled. All right, here we go. So, working this around, the uh, first binomial uh, trinomial factors in two. So we get x minus two, x minus five. Good. That adds up to negative seven. Multiply to positive ten. What about the next one? X minus 5 and X minus 3, good. That multiplies to positive 15, adds to negative 8. What about this one here? Good, that multiplies to negative 18, adds to 3. All right, what's going on on this one? I need to factor out a negative to put it in the right order. And then what's special about that one? Difference of squares, right? And a difference of square factors into two binomials. Square root of x squared is? Good. There you go. All right, so now that everything's fi uh, finally all factored out, what can I do next? I can cancel out the x minus 2s, x minus 5s. And the x minus 3s. All right. What's left on top then? And what's left on bottom? Negative x plus 2. Therefore, you didn't have the right answer. <laughs> ah, questions? When I factor out the negative to switch the 4 and the x squared to put it in the correct order, that's where the negative came from. Yeah, the negative just rode down. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
that question? All right, so those last two that you're looking at, they look super complicated, but they're not. It's just a different way of saying dividing. All right? So what we're going to do is do the same thing. We're going to keep, change, flip. All right? So it's a different way to write a division problem. So I'm going to keep 8x squared y over x plus 1, then change the multiplication, and then flip x plus 1 and 6xy squared. So right off the bat, what can I cancel? Because there's not much I can factor. I can, I can cancel out the x plus 1s, leaving me with 8x squared y over 6xy squared. Now I have a regular monomial, so what can I do now? Divide. What's 8 divided by 6? x squared divided by x. Y divided by y squared. Y on the bottom. There you go. So again, go ahead and try B on your own. Keep change flip. Factor. Cancel. Write what's left. And then we will conclude it as a day. Good. Ready to check it? Hmm? All right, so again, division problem. It looks weird. Same process, though. Keep, change, flip. So I keep the first one. Change the multiplication. Flip the second one. I will say the biggest thing you can do on these type of problems is stay organized. There's a lot of stuff going on, so make sure you know exactly where all your work is. All right, what's special about this one? Difference of squares, and that factors in too. All right, what about the bottom? Good. What about the top? About the bottom. All right, now what? What can I cancel? All right, so then what's your answer? Good parentheses. So make sure you do parentheses in this situation. Yeah. 
There you go. Yeah, about five minutes. Questions? Very straightforward. Yes. Now that you've seen it, not as scary as when you saw example five when you first walked in, huh? There you go.